You are traveling to another dimension between light and shadow, beyond what is known. A journey into a wondrous land of new discoveries. You've just entered the Twilight Zone. This term, the Twilight Zone, is actually referring to deep reefs or mesophotic coral ecosystems where there's a lower level of light but there still is enough light for certain organisms to use that light to survive. These tropical reef areas lie between 150 and 500 feet in depth where too little sunlight penetrates for coral to thrive but enough light remains to support a diverse community of marine organisms. The low light is interesting. There's very few algae and very few coral that uh, photosynthesize because of the low amount of light. So the trophic structure of the fish community changes a lot. There's no plants there, so they have to survive on other diets. Together, Elliot and Luis have a common goal, a deep dive expedition to explore the Twilight Zone. We're starting here at the Academy to uh, uh, this new initiative, this project, to look at uh, several deeper reefs, several mesophotic coral reefs that were unexplored in the past. There's very few people because it involves a lot of technical diving. There's very few people that did this work. A closed circuit rebreather is actually, it's a tool that allows us to recycle the air that we're breathing by actually scrubbing the CO2 that we exhale during each breath. This allows us to extend our dive quite a bit compared to traditional open circuit scuba where all of the air that we exhale will actually enter into the water column. And it helps too because the bubbles scare the fish, so with the rebreather we can uh, get a lot closer to the fish. Recently, Elliot had a chance to use closed circuit rebreathers to explore a Northern California cave system as part of a collaborative project with the National Forest Service. Our most recent exploration was done in a flooded cave system called Hull City Cave, which uh, has never officially been explored. I think people have poked their head in here and there, but no one's actually gone and explored and mapped the system. Surprisingly, they found no organisms living in the cave. So we did take water quality samples, both within the cave and around the cave uh, from different water sources, and we found that the the water in the cave itself had elevated levels of bromine and chlorine, and the levels were so high that nothing is going to live in those levels of, um, no fish or invertebrates are gonna live, perhaps bacteria. Using the same dive technology to explore the twilight zone, what do academy researchers hope to find? Lots of new species. <laughs> First and foremost, because it's so unexplored, Every time we go to a deep location somewhere, we find a few of the species that we found before, but a lot of species that are new. So we still know that there's a lot of species, as much as maybe 50% are unknown. The depth of the twilight zone doesn't make the reefs immune to the effects of overfishing and pollution from heavily populated cities. And that can cause extinctions or diminishing populations, and we don't even know what's down there. Scientists, environmental policymakers, and Academy visitors will all benefit from new discoveries in the Twilight Zone. As we're exploring the Twilight Zone, we certainly have plans on collecting and bringing back live animals to put on display in the Steinhardt Aquarium, um, many of which may be new to science, so new and novel species is always exciting. And